Today, with the help of Nick from Stridewise, we're going to cut apart the two more popular work boots that are very similar style with the Timberland Pros and the Cat work boots and figure out which one of these boots is the better work boot. And we're going to cut them in half to find out because these are two boots that I feel like a lot of people talk online about which is the better boot. Even though they're two different price points, there seems to be like a fair amount of conversation online. And since Nick, even though he's from Australia, lives in New York, we figured it's best to have him represent Timberland. So he'll go over most of the Timberland information and I'll cover the cat information. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's me representing the, the mean streets of New York. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually not the the premium waterproof Timberland that uh, was made popular by Jay Z, Notorious B.I.G. All these guys. This is more about work. This is one of the more commonly used for work. But uh, yeah, this is us facing off. This right. is the battle of the boots, yeah. Utah versus New York. Ready, fight. That's right. Kind of Australia, kind yeah. of as well. And be sure to thank Nick for popping into the channel by going to check out his channel. He's, you guys have probably already seen a lot of his videos. He does a lot of boot reviews and covers a lot of the stuff that I cover, but in a more eloquent way. So I'll put a link to his channel in the description. This video is sponsored by Gear Dryer. And the cool thing about Gear Dryer is their headquarters is like three blocks from here. So it's really fun to do an ad for a local company, but also an ad for a product that is actually relevant to the channel. Because if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance you have a pair of boots that could benefit from a gear dryer. But it's not just for boots and shoes. You can dry your, your ski boots on it, your work boots, your gloves. Both of those are also boots. Your helmet, your waders, coats, anything anything that needs to get dry that you get wet playing in, you can dry on the gear dryer. And that's because it has 12 modular twist and lock ports that make it really easy to adjust things around and, and focus the air where you want it to be focused. And it has a little timer that you can set anywhere from 15 minutes up to 24 hours. So you can just set your gear on there, set the timer and just forget about it. And maybe my favorite thing is it's a really heavy duty, sturdy piece of equipment. It's made from steel that has a really nice powder coating finish on top. So it looks good in your garage or your shop, your workplace or a cabin if you have one. And it runs off 120 volts. You can just plug it into any wall outlet. And we use the gear dryer quite a bit in the shop just for all the videos we film and for personal use. And the thing that's really nice is you've got a heat setting and an ambient temperature setting. So for your cheaper equipment, you don't care about running some heat through it, you can get those dried really quick, or your more sensitive leather-based products, you just put on ambient temperature and it thoroughly dries your, your boots out without ruining the leather or without like overheating the leather, which is nice. So if a gear dryer sounds like something you might need, be sure to check them out via the link in my description. And thanks again to Gear Dryer for sponsoring this video. Okay, now let's go over the boot information, starting with the Timberlands. So you got that, Nick. Yeah, these are the Timberland boots. The style is the men's direct attach six inch waterproof boots. This color is the very famous wheat Nubuck color that like it's sort of become shorthand for Timberland themselves. Uh, they weigh one pound, 11 ounces. And the price for this one here, which is a soft toe, it's 140 bucks, but you can get it with a steel toe for 150 bucks. And they are made in the Dominican Republic. For the cats, the brand is obviously Caterpillar. The style is the second shift ST. The, the color is dark brown, but it also comes in a very similar like wheat Nubuck color. And they weigh two pounds, one ounce. So slightly heavier because of the steel toe in this one where this one's not a steel toe. They retail for $89 and they're made in India. Part of the reason we wanted to do this video is because we, me and you both talk a lot about these Pacific Northwest brands that are like $500 for the work boots and not everyone can afford those. Yeah. So there's, there's brands out there that sell these $100 to $150 work boots, but there's a lot of brands out there that are selling really subpar boots as work boots to people who actually want to use them as work boots and they're terrible quality. And so I've, I've really enjoyed kind of tearing apart these $100 to $150 boots to really see which boots are work ready and which ones aren't. And so that's kind of the goal of this video is to see if Caterpillar makes a decent work boot and if Timberland makes a decent work boot and which one's better and which one you might want for specific reasons. Yeah, once you start getting kind of excited about boots, it's easy to kind of fall down the rabbit hole and just want to get the best of the best right. of the best of the best. But most people when they want a work boot, while those boots can be very effective, uh, what you really need is something that is, uh, well, basically what's dictated by your job site, which is oftentimes yeah. uh, waterproof, uh, electric shock resistant, uh, insulated. And if, if those are the sorts of features you need, you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, 10 inches of yeah. uh, leather underneath your foot. And like not everyone wants to spend an entire month breaking in a pair of boots. Some people that's just true. want yeah. a boot that they can buy, throw on and get to work immediately. And that's kind of what these boots really are. So now let's go over the boot information, starting with the leather. 
So we'll go over Timberlands first, then Cats. So starting with the Timberland leather. So as far as the leather itself goes, uh, these are, as I mentioned, the Wheat Nubuck leather. So Nubuck is actually not the same thing as most leathers you might be used to. It's when the leather has been kind of sanded down to reveal a nap of protein fibers. That doesn't mean that this is suede. It is thicker than suede. It is technically a tiny little bit thinner than like a, a full grain leather in that it's been sanded down. But you do get like a, an upshot of that in that like they don't show scratches quite as easily yeah. as uh, as more as other full grain leathers. Although again, you can get this in full grain leather. It's chrome tanned uh, and it also has been treated with waterproofing compounds. So it's, it's a famously a waterproof leather, yeah. like Timberland's quite well known for their waterproof leathers. And uh, while oftentimes that's achieved by spraying it with silicone or something like that, with this sort of leather, it is, uh, it's sort of like infused into yeah. the leather it's during the- It's part of that, that tanning process to make it waterproof. Yeah, that's true. Cats, on the other hand, they do have a Nubuck leather just like this, but we, once again, we just didn't we didn't buy the right boot, okay? <laughs> but this is their full grain version, and, and Timberland also comes in a full grain version. Mm. But for this one, it is a full grain leather. It's it's a technically a, a, a chrome tan leather that has a ton of oil infused into it, so they call it oil tanned. And we once again, we don't really know the thickness of it and really the whole quality of it until we get it cut in half. But they're very similar leathers, and they seem like they offer about the same quality of leather. and. But we really see when you get them cut in half. So as for the lining, the Timberlands here have a breathable and moisture wicking lining with antimicrobial treatment for odor control, keep your feet from stinking, which is easy to happen, especially when they are like insulated boots, which yeah. these are. So these have 200 grams of thermalite insulation. A good chunk of the lining, by the way, is also made from recycled materials, which is a very cool. It's sort of a big part of the Timberland brand. Um, but it is worth emphasizing here that they are insulated boots and they are work boots and not everybody wants insulated boots because that can affect a uh, breathability, which is often what people want from a work boot. But if you require a waterproof boot, then uh, this is insane. Because like when, I, when I think about a work boot, I'm thinking of like working in the summer when it's really hot, doing construction or framing or something. Yeah. And so I think it's really odd that their pro line almost always has insulation in it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The, 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 the other, the premium six inch waterproof boot that they're known for, that was uh, famously meant to keep your feet cold when you're standing on street corners all day. Mm -hmm. that's, what they, that's what they said the it was. New York for. street corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just like, for me, I would, like, I'd rather have with the Caterpillars where it doesn't have insulation. It's just a, a nylon lining. And the term that they use, which is very like marketing jargony, is they call it Cat's engineered nylon mesh lining optimizes breathability and comfort. When in all reality, it's just a cheap nylon lining. There's really not much else to it. You know, so it's almost like the Caterpillars have a little, it's a little, a little bit less of a lining than the, than the Timberlands. It just doesn't have the, the insulation. It doesn't have the waterproofing, but similar nylon linings. For the construction, uh, this is made with what they call uh, direct attach construction, which in my opinion is a much stronger method of, uh, of attaching the upper to the sole, right? Like, so it's, it's more tough than cemented construction, which is like, sort of like gluing it. Direct attachment is not just gluing the upper to the outsole, but it's injection molded together, which uh, causes like a, a much stronger bond. Yeah. All these cracks get filled in and everything. Uh, and so that's that's definitely uh, one argument for it being tougher than their more street friendly footwear. And we've seen with other work boots in this price range where they're just cemented together, even like at the worst examples, those Converse boots. Ooh, easy peasy. Mm. You can literally just pull them apart. Versus these, in these injection molded, these direct attach constructions. They're so hard to tear apart. And then as for the cats, this is a Goodyear welted boot, which was really surprising for under a hundred dollars. Excuse me. Um, because a lot of times you don't see Goodyear welted boots for under $175. Yeah. And it does have a, a plastic or a synthetic welt. So, you know, you do have that same issue you see with like thorough goods where eventually if you really wear them hard, that welt splits and cracks and it makes it a lot harder to resole. So technically they're resolable, but with a synthetic welt, it just doesn't have as much opportunity to be resold. But like you're also not super likely to resold it more than once or twice anyway, right? Right, especially yeah. Given, once, given the cost of a resole. But. Yeah, like especially for under a hundred bucks, most people are gonna buy this boot, do it for, wear it for half a season or a full season, buy a new one every single year and just be done with it. And the one thing I do like about it is this sole is sewn all the way through at the toe because that's the big problem with most cemented boots is especially for construction, you're kicking stuff around so much that if that sole isn't sewn all the way through, you start delaminating that boot and the next thing you know, the whole thing's come undone. So that is a, a really nice feature, even for like a $90 boot. Yeah. It's so cheap. So for waterproofness, uh, as I've mentioned, the Timberlands are waterproof. They have uh, waterproofing compounds in the leather itself, and also they're, they're seam sealed, so it's uh, it's 
effectively a waterproof boot. Yeah, and I, I like the seam sealing too because a lot of these brands, they say their, their boots are waterproof because they have waterproof leather. But as soon as you get it in water, all that water leaches through the thread onto the inside of the boot. But Timberland allegedly has it seam sealed. I guess we'll actually see what it looks like when we get it cut. Mm. But the cats, they're not, they don't say anything about waterproofing. So I'm assuming the, the leather's not waterproof and there's no like waterproof lining on the inside. So let's do a quick waterproof test. We'll, we'll dunk them in some water, see how much water actually leaks onto the inside. So let's get to the test. So with the results of the test, the Timberlands are pretty waterproof. We didn't really have any water come through. Cats, on the other hand, they absorbed a ton of the water into the actual leather themselves, itself, and then it did leach onto the inside. So clearly the Timberlands are more waterproof and the Caterpillars are not waterproof. Moving on to the outsole here. So this is the Timberland Pro Rubber. Allegedly, they say this is like a formulation that's like a much more effective for working, much yeah. more hard wearing, and uh, it's also just significantly taller and yeah. thicker and chunkier than uh, than these ones right here, if that's important to you. Um, there's a Seinfeld episode that entirely <laughs> hinges on George wearing Timberlands to convince his girlfriend that he's taller than he actually is. Yeah, new Timberlands? Yeah, and a whole new me. I'm up two inches on these babies. Really? Five eight, five seven. <laughs> and uh, these boots would do Costanza yeah. pretty well, I think. An extra quarter of an inch at least. Yeah, so there's the Timberland Pros, and you can see even with the, or not the Timberland Pros, like, like, the yeah. premium Timberlands, it is well, like half an inch taller. Yeah, this one, this one's significantly taller. Yeah. Then as for the cat's outsole, it's they call it their T3 outsole. Allegedly, they designed it after the tracks on a Caterpillar um, bulldozer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's just a rubber based sole and it looks like it's pretty thick. I don't know, it's, it's really hard to judge it until we cut it in half. And then the next thing we talk about is midsole. And these midsoles, I don't even really know what's on the inside because they don't really advertise it on their websites. You know, we can kind of see a little bit with these Timberlands, they have a little bit of, it almost feels like foam. I would go with rubber. Yeah, so. They usually rubber midsoles and these kind of things. But. And then with the cats, we don't know either because it's, it's good you're welted, so there's probably some sort of filling on the inside, but we don't really know. If only there was a way to find out. I know, if only we could cut these in half. <laughs> so let's cut them in half. Let's do that.
All right, we've got them chopped in half, so let's see what's inside. So the Timberlands are actually pretty surprising because I thought for sure that this would be rubber, like kind of we talked about, but it's actually a huge fat layer of foam all the way through there. It might be the most foam in a boot that I've seen. Yeah, this is a very full boot, um, but uh, yeah, it definitely leans into that whole uh, work kind of, not aesthetic, but like, know yeah, right? <laughs> of it, um, because that's going to provide some nice shock absorption as well and be pretty pretty soft underfoot, at least compared to, uh, you know, vegetable tanned everything yeah. that, you, that you normally get. Because when you have a, a three quarters of an inch of foam underneath your foot and you're standing around all day, that's got to be way more comfortable, especially like with the, with the insole and everything in there compared to the cats, which is that, that exact same thing, is not a thick layer of foam. It's a Goodyear welted boot, which has a really thin layer of foam that fills that cavity caused by the Goodyear welt. So this is a boot that will slightly break into the shape of your foot, but you're never gonna have quite as much squish underfoot as the Timberlands. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is necessarily bad because it is like a, it's a fairly soft rubber. Let's actually do a Duro test on these. The outsole on the cats is 65. Timberlands are 77, 76, so somewhere a little bit closer to that range in like the Vibrams and what you see in most work boots. So maybe that's where some of this comfort is going to come from is it is a softer outsole, so you don't, maybe don't need quite as much foam, but I still mm -hmm. think that thick foam midsole is going to be more comfortable than the Cats. The shank on the Timberlands as well surprised me uh, for a work boot, because like for work boots typically you get like a steel shank, sometimes right. like a leather shank or something like that. Uh, but for this here, it's a composite shank. Which uh, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but it's, def it's definitely more flexible than a steel shank. Yeah, because you're gonna get in the, the cat has a steel shank, and I, I can't bend it. Now yeah, let's bend that one and see how easy it is to bend. You know, so you can bend that easy. composite yeah. shank, mm. but it isn't necessarily a bad thing to have some flexibility. It's more just to have the support in there. And then to the thickness of the leathers, this was a, a question we had early on because uh, being a cheaper boot, I assume this is gonna be thinner leather, and this Caterpillar boot comes in at two millimeters. Yours comes in at we got two it. millimeters as well. Yeah, there so it is. So fairly similar thicknesses of leather. And honestly, I feel like half the time these different boot brands get the, the same leather from the same tanneries. Mm. You know, because both of them have very similar leathers. So they're probably similar quality, except for the Timberlands do have that the, the waterproof agents infused into the leather, but similar thicknesses and probably similar durabilities. The Timberlands do have a lot going for them. They are, of course, they're more expensive. Um, what is it, like, like $70 more expensive, also? Yeah, these are 90 those are 140 to $150. Uh -huh. So whatever that math is. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't know. tell you. We'll put it on the screen. Some, yeah. of the other, <laughs> some of the good things about this, uh, this boot that are over the cat is that it is waterproof, which is like a big deal. The leather itself is also waterproof as well. Um, I would I would argue that'd be more comfortable because yeah. like there's a there's a lot more shock absorbing qualities in here. Like the insole's really really thick. There's a tall ton of foam in the uh, in the sole itself as well. Um, and also you get a fair amount of stability with this with this composite shank, right? And the last thing to note, which is it's a pro or a con depending on how you look at it, like most of these things, is that it's an insulated boot. Yeah. So uh, that's gonna be really good for guys who are gonna work uh, outside when it's mm. cold, uh, especially people up in New England where the boots sort of made us bones. Um, but of course that can also be a downside if uh, you are really stressed about your feet sweating yeah. in the summer. The cats on the other hand, they are significantly more affordable. You know, for uh, under a hundred bucks, I think these do it pretty well. You know, we've cut apart some boots like the Brunts and some of these other boots that are $120 price range. And I consider these to be better than the Brunts and some of the other ones because high quality leather, a thick outsole, a decent midsole, you know, you, get, you have a Goodyear welt construction. So if something does go wrong, you can sew it back together. If you do make it through a season, you want to get, to get them resold, you could get them resold. There's a lot of brands out there, like we talked about earlier. So there's a lot of brands that just use their good name, like Carhartt, to sell a, what they consider a work boot that isn't really ready for work. Yeah. And I would say these Caterpillar boots are ready for work for that price point. That's pretty much the video. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to thank Nick from Stridewise by going checking out his channel. Um, he has tons of boot reviews. He actually wears the boots, unlike I do. I just <laughs> cut them in half, so be sure to check that out. And let me know what you guys think. If you have a pair of these, what your personal experiences are with them. Because it's a valuable thing. Because sometimes I'll review a boot and I'll be like, oh, they're great. And then the whole comment section is just like, no, they're terrible. They fell apart. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So that's it's like, valuable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially uh, let us know what you think about the breathability aspect. Because like yeah. the insulation one, is, it's a lot of brands will like promise they have like the insulated and waterproof but mm -hmm. breathable through very advanced technology. And sometimes people argue they are. And sometimes they're like, this is not breathable yeah. at all. So yeah, give, give us your, uh, your experience actually working in these if you have them or just being yeah. around out and about in them. Yeah, so thank you guys for everything you do. See ya. Yeah, thanks. Bye.